Hello, everybody. It's Mike here on the Swim Run Show podcast. It's happening. Our first guest has been recorded. We are going to push the button. So thanks for showing an interest in the early days, and hopefully it's the start of a long journey. Here we go. Hello and welcome to the Swim Run Show, our first episode with Max Anderson, Otolo Swim Run World Champion. Hello, Max. How are you doing? Hello. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Well, no, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Uh, I'm, I should say Max is uh, part of a team uh, with Hugo Tormento. So it's uh, the team world champion uh, for the last two years. Is that right, Max? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, 2022 for the first time and, and then obviously last year as well. Yeah. Yeah. So if you... If you're not new to swim run, you probably know all about Max. But if you are new, uh, yeah, he's, he's quite good at swim running. Um, he's got the course record with Hugo back in 2022 for the Oslo World Championships. So, yeah, if you're new to, to Max, then he's, um, he knows what he's talking about. He's done, he's done a bit of swim running. So, Max, well, hopefully, just, oh, hopefully yeah. know what I'm talking about. I cannot <laughs> promise anything, but I will do my best to, to share some good advice, I, I, I hope, here. Yes. Well, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll we'll let you know at the end. <laughs> but um, to start with, Max, what obviously you haven't been swim running that long, I don't think. Um, what what were you doing before in terms of sports? If we go way way back uh, from like when I was a kid, uh, I was doing mostly I was playing uh, football uh, or. or Soccer, if Americans are listening, not, not so. Yeah, the the, the the European version, football. Yeah, uh, and that was like my main main sports activity that I was doing when I was a kid. Uh, but I was doing uh, lots of other activities as well. Uh, where I was an active active kid, but but in, it always included like a ball. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it was nothing, no, no endurance sports uh, in that sense. Uh, but football was the main sport, and I played football until I was like. Uh, 18, 19, something like that. And then I quit because I moved abroad and, and uh, yeah, uh, life took a little bit of another turn and, and sports wasn't my, my, like the major focus in my life. Um, but yeah, so, so endurance sports has never been, until I was yeah, 20 years plus at least, endurance sports was, was, was nothing that was in my life at all. Uh, and when we were running, uh, doing like the endurance training in football, I was, I mean, I was not, not, not worst, but I was definitely not the best, especially not in long distance. I, I didn't really fancy it at all. So, so it's, it's, uh, yeah, uh, it's something that's been coming later to me. Uh, okay. Definitely. Just on the, on the football, what position were you? Mm-hmm. I was playing uh, like on the left left side a little bit both. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm I'm left uh, footed, so left foot. okay. uh, yeah, but both like in the midfield, but also further back. Okay. Uh, so 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 I don't know what to call it in English. Is it like wing 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 yeah. player well, wing? I, I guess there's, there's we call we pro- I reckon you'd be a wing back like a, a wing back a, yeah, yeah like a Andy Robertson for Liverpool or um, <laughs> yeah probably yeah maybe, of course you have a Liverpool reference there <laughs> yeah of course or maybe a John Barnes down the left, uh, left uh, wing. Yeah. so <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, oh good so so right so um, and then you went into endurance a little bit was that was that triathlon was that running or was what, what was in my early twenties, uh, I, I didn't do much else uh, than than just a little bit of running to just stay somehow. I w- I wouldn't say I was I was staying fit because I was not fit, but I was I was just doing a little bit of training just because it's been a part of my life for a very long time to do some kind of training. So I just started to running a little bit, but it was, I mean, the level was not good. I, w- I wasn't doing any races. I wasn't competitive at all. I was only doing it for recreational stuff and just to 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 feel good. So so sports, I would say from la from like I was twenty up until I was twenty five. Sport was not really such a big part of my life at all. But after that, uh, I think I uh, I started a little bit more. I mean, you know, gradually running more. 
uh, and you you start to hang out with some friends that they was running as well and and I started to do some some normal running races road running races um, 10k race half marathon race uh, but only still only for recreational stuff and, and not competitive I was more doing it for the fun experience I would say uh, so so didn't have any 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 goals or or any like results driven uh, things that was uh, taking me to the start line it was I was doing it because it was fun Th- that's how it all started and, and I started to, to like the endurance training more and more I mean I started to to, to like running because before I I didn't enjoy it at all and, and I forced myself out there just to do something but uh, I think uh, about that time 25 years old or something I started to to enjoy it more and I uh, started also to try out some trail running races uh, and I started to do a little bit of a longer stuff like up to a marathon distance maybe but not longer than that um, and yeah and I did that for for a couple of years or for a, uh, and and then it suddenly, I think, just uh, it took off pretty quickly when when I started. Okay, now I, <laughs> from like being just recreational runner and and enjoy it. Uh, I when when I started trail running, I was like, ah, oh, maybe now I I feel a little bit more competitive. I want to perform here. I want to be better. So, yeah, starting to spend more time investing in like learning about training and stuff. Um. And then I get in contact with Swim Run 2017, I think, was my first, like... Okay. Or obviously, I, I knew about Swim Run before, because in Sweden, it was quite a a big thing back then. Uh, mm-hmm. But but I think I I was, I was got in contact with it 2017 uh, and, and tried it for the first time 2017, I think. Which race was that then, Max? Uh, it, it was a small local race in, in Sweden. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it was like in the middle of Sweden, just a, a nice one, beautiful one. They still have a trail running race there, uh, but it doesn't exist anymore, that race. And I did it with a friend. We we only did it for fun because we have heard about Swim Run and Ursula. Uh, and we were like, oh, that's, that sounds like a fun challenge. Maybe uh, something else than, than trail running. And okay. uh, back then, I, I didn't know how to swim. My My friend was a better swimmer than me. So... So he was like taking the lead in the swims and I was behind trying to do some kind of freestyle swimming, but I was more just, yeah, paddles and arms <laughs> okay. everywhere. <laughs> so, okay. So, so you didn't really know how to swim in 2017 and. No, uh, look, no. Yeah, I okay. maybe I, I, I obviously I had been to the pool a couple of times maybe, but, but I've never, I never swam as a kid. I mean, in Sweden, we swim, swim in school obviously as kids but we, we never learned freestyle we learned breaststrokes and we learn how to survive if we had have to we don't learn how to swim i would say right. or we don't learn how to enjoy swimming which is a shame right uh, so yeah no freestyle i was a totally beginner uh, i i didn't have any idea of the uh, like the technique or how you should do it uh, obviously it's i have seen people swimming so yeah. I, I could like try but no I, I wasn't a good swimmer at all I, I wasn't a swimmer at all wow so that that's quite quite a step up now for for tw- well, the last two years of winning the world champs there so i guess mm-hmm. i'm getting the feeling you focused a bit on the swim training over the last few years yeah but yeah I, when, when i so, so when me and my friend we we finished that race somewhere in the middle of the start field i don't remember exactly our position but but i think we we did it mostly for fun and we enjoyed the day it was such a cool experience and i had like a, this really like wow moment uh moving moving in nature and you know i think everyone that is doing swim run can relate to that feeling that you it's something else compared to a trail running race or, or another race that you're doing swim run is is special in that sense uh, and, and then i decided i i, I need to need to do this again and i but obviously then i need to to learn how to swim because yeah we we if i remember correctly we didn't use any pool boy we we only had small hand paddles and we had shoes and we had some kind of flotation on on the legs and the, and the wetsuits we were using back then it was probably it made me sink more than it made me float i don't <laughs> know it, it wasn't it wasn't the same equipment that we have yeah. today <laughs> I did my first one in 2014, and it's similar. Uh, didn't really 
yeah, just had a wetsuit, didn't have a poor boy, didn't even have paddles or a tow mm. line. Um, unlike Max, I've probably got slower over the years. He's got faster. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, so 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 you're swimming. You you you've obviously uh, focused a bit on that. I was listening to you on the uh, the Low Side Boys great podcast back a couple of years ago, where you you got in touch with um, sim coaching, I mm-hmm. think in Sweden, yeah. and did some coaching there. Yeah, correct. Anna Karin, she's uh, she's living here in Gothenburg, and she's a former Olympian swimmer and and uh, the best teacher, just the best coach. Uh, she she has helped me a lot with with, with swimming over the years. Uh, I've been to various of her courses and have uh, different yeah. Uh, PT hours with her and and she was, she helped me a lot so yeah in the beginning there I put a lot of time and effort in my my swimming and we had a good group here in Gothenburg so I think I managed to develop quite quickly to some kind of of decent level of swimming and and I mean it, it but then it's it's you you cannot compare yourself to the ones that have been swimming for their whole life I mean I still Still, if I could could get to a, a pretty okay level, level when I swim with real swimmers, then for example Hugo or or other people that have swimming since they were kids, I mean they they just have another movement in the water. They are just swimming in another way, and then obviously the paddle and pool boy helps when we're doing swim run because then we we the the non swimmers we, we that that helps us more I think than it yeah. it helps. Uh, the real swimmers so i i have a lot of help from from the paddle and pool boy and still my like uh, times from the pool it, it, the difference is, is big when i'm using paddle and pool boy compared to just swimming normal freestyle and and when i'm swimming normal freestyle i i am i, I wouldn't say i'm 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 not a, even a decent swimmer. I'm just a no- normal guy swimming. Yeah. And that, I, we're coming on to some, we've had a few questions from the listeners. Uh, well, not the listeners, <laughs> people who are interested. Coming mm-hmm. on to uh, those linked to this. Uh, that's the beauty. One of the beauties I've found over the years of the team element is you can, if you, if you match your partner well, you can you know, complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. Um, it, it sounds like Hugo potentially leads most of the swims um, and you probably push on the, the runs. I'm just making this up in my head, but that's how it feels. Is that more or less right? Yeah, but, but definitely in the in in the swims. Hugo is uh, always in front and, and depending on whether he has a really good swim day or, or a normal one or, or a little bit of a, a slower one, we, we use... Uh, the tow line different ways if if he is a really in a really good swim shape we we have the the tow line on uh, almost for every swims uh, just because i am not able to keep up on his feet for a long time if he push really really hard and he's just flying away uh, but if it's, uh, for example in the world champs this year uh, hugo was sick before the race in covid and he didn't have his best day so then we were not using the tall line at all in the swimming, uh, just because then he, he he was still swimming in front, but I was just swimming in the back, and and we he didn't have to pull me at all in in, in the water just to try to save some of his energy, and then we uh, so so a little bit depending on his swimming shape, we use the tall line okay. differently, but yeah, he's he's always leading because he, I mean, he's almost qualifying for the French national team in swimming back back in the day so i mean he's a right. yeah. proper professional swimmer <laughs> which okay. i'm not <laughs> okay so that's that's a great insight there so 2022 you didn't didn't use the tow line at all because of uh, uh 2022 we actually did that then he hugo was in really he had a good really good day we both had a really good day in 2022 okay. when we did it but uh 2023 yeah uh, oh sorry 2023 right yeah, this year. Then, then Hugo was was sick. Ah, yeah, okay. we did a slower time this year, uh, and and then we decided to uh, skip the. Yeah, we had it to, to had the tow line on for the first swim, but then we mm. decided to skip it for for I think if I remember correctly for the rest of the race in the swims, just because I could follow anyway, and and I just he then he could take the pace he wanted in the swim and and try to save some energy because yeah we needed it for the runs. Um, yeah. 
yeah a death race tough yeah tough day um mm. interesting so that's one another thing i love about swim run is you can make these strategic decisions based on a number of mm. things how you're feeling conditions etc cetera, etc cetera. so and then learn from it i guess in some of the swims you'd be possibly quicker in transition if you haven't got a tow line did you <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think that's one one point. In in shorter swims, uh, we we usually don't have a uh, tow line anymore. Just uh, and, th- and I think we have have uh, learned over the years racing now. Uh, but but yeah, definitely. If you if we skip it for shorter swims, we are quicker in the transitions. Uh, and normally, then I can go in first into the water. I can make a push in the end of the run. Just go in first. Uh, Hugo yeah. can jump in behind me, and and then when he feels ready, he come up next to me on the side, and then I just take his seats for the last part of that swim, and we can move way quicker as a team if we had to compare it to if we had to take on the tow line, and I would be yeah. behind from the start, and so yeah, um, really can save time there and and do smart moves. That's brilliant. That that's um. Yeah, I guess that's some, something worth practicing. Well, yeah, once you've started, if you are racing in a team and, and not solo, mm. uh, there's all this stuff to think about and play with. It's it's fun just playing around, mm. I guess, with these ideas. On the yeah. solo, um, have you ever raced solo, Max? Yeah, but I, I have been doing a couple of uh, local races here in Sweden solo, but I've never raced in the World Series solo. Uh, I have raced maybe two, three four races solo something like that uh, and it, it it's uh, it's fun for yeah. for training i think i mean i i enjoy swim run i can go out and train uh swim run myself s- solo so i enjoy the thing just being outside and training and and racing solo can can be fun but i've never done any really long race solo or or like a world series distance solo uh not sure not sure how how that experience is actually. Have yeah. you? I've I've only done one solo swim run, and that was Malta 2019, and it was only the mm-hmm. it was the sprint distance. Um, sprint course. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find anyone to come with me. <laughs> um, <laughs> my beloved fiance came, but she wasn't up for uh, joining in. <laughs> so, it was uh, more mental mental support. Yes, exactly. Line. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a great day. Quite rough conditions, but you know. I prefer to race in a team. It's more fun. Mm-hmm. And you get to do the World Series. Um, I know you can do solo now in the World Series, but and you couldn't. Yeah, it was fun. I've, I enjoyed it. It was, um, mm. I see it as, it's a good way for for people. It's easier to start solo, I guess. Um, so it's cool that there's there's loads of solo options for racers now. And and I, I suppose you could see it as a great way to train as well for if you are looking to do a team only event. Um, so, so yeah, it's it's a cool uh, element that's been added to the sport mm. over the last well six or seven odd years. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think it's a good, good, good addition. And I think since, I mean, I, I guess they started with team team races because of safety reasons and stuff like that. But now everyone is having such a good gear with, with the wetsuits uh, and, and pool boys that, that will like help you. You feel safe in the water. I mean, it's almost impossible to to drown in a wetsuit and a pool boy. <laughs> yeah. <If> you... <laughs> yeah. And I guess with the shorter distances as well, I mean, mm. the Otolo course, the original one, is it was just so long that, you, know, mm. you could see why it's done together adventure racing yeah. style now there's really there's, the short races are uh, in terms of safety management a lot easier um, mm. i guess no, i t- um, totally yeah. agree but but then i i it, yeah i like the solo that that it exists but but to me i still think swim run is a team sport like if if you did uh, and i know maybe with this different opinions of this but but for the actual racing class or whatever we should call it the one the competitive one my opinion is that you should like that that's the team class uh so i i don't know what i think of uh for example Ertler having uh, prize money in both solo and team class i think they should decide whether they go for like either you 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 do you can have solo as a additional and as an entry and as a 
but maybe you should decide which is the, the race format that we see as our racing like this is where we compete and this is where we like do it for recreational but that's just uh, i i think that will bring that then you will then we will create a str stronger starting field yeah, and i think if if they think that solo is the one that should be like the racing competitive class they should do that but, or if they think that the team is the racing competitive class they should do that but having them both as racing competitive class i think we're just spreading out and making the field as non-competitive as it could be if we just put all effort into creating. Here is where you, if, if you want to race fast, if you want to compete, this is where you should compete in. Mm -hmm. If you want to to like uh, do this for the for the adventure, the experience, to learn. Uh, if you don't have any partner, you can still come and join the whole atmosphere and and the event, but you will not be like in the. It, it, it will, yeah. Yeah, um, I yeah, I hadn't thought about that actually. Um... Yeah, I I think I'd probably agree. The in terms of the the top, the pinnacle of the sport, and the, the, one of the things that makes it so good is the team class. So, yeah, I probably agree. We should focus on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, who knows what's going to happen in the future? Yeah, <laughs> and I guess it's it's no no right or wrong there. I yeah. still uh still in a process of 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 developing the sport so we'll see what happens maybe yeah. solar class it will be the ones that dominates in, in five years i have no idea yeah yeah well as long as we're involved in some way <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. so we'll get to uh, a few questions from, from a few folks obviously this is the first episode so um we've had um i just put a message out for some questions we've got a great question from a guy called andy tough <clears throat> he's asked what's the best GPS watch for swim run. Hmm. Uh, that's a good one. I, I wish I had the answer. <laughs> I would say because my my watch is not good uh, for swim run, or the GPS is not accurate enough, and maybe I'm not using it properly. So I shouldn't put put too much blame on the watch. Maybe, but I I am using the trail running mode on my watch when I'm doing swim run, and I do not like to manually lap in the transitions. And I have tried my watch. Uh, it has a swim run like activity uh, type in it, but when when I and, I and I have tried to have like the auto lap feature, uh, but but that doesn't just work because some yeah it thinks that you are swimming when you're just fixing with your cap while running. Then it thinks you are starting to swim and then it laps automatically and uh, and yeah, so that feature doesn't work uh so so i personally i just use the trail running mode on my watch and, I, and then i started on the start line and then just let it let it go for the yeah. full race or the full session and then i just stop it while i cross the finish line and the gps is is always off i always get longer distances on my watch than in reality uh, but to be honest when i'm racing um the only time i'm looking at my watch is when we have like after transitions, when coming out of the water, I look at the watch and I see what what's the total distance I have now, and then I know okay we have four k on this run, so then I just know okay this is the total distance I have now, four k. <laughs> okay. From now on, I will start to prepare myself for swimming again, and I don't don't really care if it's because running then then the watch is working properly. I mean it's it's the issue is when I'm swimming with it and it's just losing GPS, yeah, and losing yeah. the signal. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's, my watch isn't in the the newest and the best. So I think probably the GPS is better in the uh, yeah. new watches. Yeah, is that a, a Garmin? A Garmin watch? Yeah, I'm using a Garmin uh, Phoenix Six. Yeah, or five. Four the, I think that the I think it exists like a seven or something as well, right? No. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, mine. I... Uh, I used the Garmin six and on the world champs, it, it had me, I did 8,000 meters of height gain, apparently. <laughs> going into, going into Strava anyway. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a tough question, Andy, uh, Andy tough. Um, mm -hmm. it seems, yeah, just as Max said, it, it's, it's okay for running and, and the swimming goes a bit haywire. Um, some, my race I, partners. I talked with someone. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, I was just going to say, my race partners do do the uh, the lap. Paul Marson and Paul mm. Skipper raced with recently. Uh, they do do the the kind of lapping, um, yep. and it's it, it 
which I don't, um, and it works okay for them. Um, and the only other thing I'd say is on Strava, it, Strava hasn't got on board with Swim Run yet, but Garmin Connect does, I'm pretty sure does work, does show you the, um, the swim and run section separately. Uh, so yeah, there's work to do on it. We need to get to get involved with Strava and see what's happening over there. Yeah, to get it uploaded as one activity to Strava. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but I think I, I talked with someone else that is using the new Garmin Phoenix. If that is number seven, I'm not sure about the numbers here. But let's say the newest one is seven, uh, and he said that the GPS was much better. And I know Hugo is using uh, Coros, uh, not the newest one, a couple of years old, uh, and his. His GPS is more accurate than mine, so okay. uh, I guess it's different brands, different models. I've uh, heard, not yeah. sure. I've heard good things about Kouros from a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, same here. I'm I'm keen to try that as my next watch uh, when I when I think feel I need one new. Okay, I'm gonna. I think I'll email Kouros later. To see if we can get the world champ sponsored. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, next question. Uh, relates to you and Hugo. So how often, this is from Alex, uh, how often do you train together? He's, obviously, Hugo's in France, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but f exactly. For for people who, who don't know, I live in Sweden, in, in Gothenburg, and Hugo lives in Paris, in France, which uh, makes it quite hard to train on a weekly basis together. Uh, so, no, but we, we are training around races together. So when we go for racing, we normally go for, for like a full weekend or, or an extended weekend. Uh, so then we do some training, but not obviously a lot since we the race is the, the major, major thing with our travel. But then we have had, uh, normally we do one or two more like training camps together a year where we actually come together and stay together for, for a week or two uh, and just train uh and then so so we're doing some specific specific work together close to to races and i think these training camps has been uh, during summer time so we have done them in stockholm and we, then we have been on the Ertler course and then i think yeah both years both the two last years we have finished up with doing the Ertler race in Gothenburg as like the final thing on that training camp okay. uh, so we don't train together too often actually okay. it's uh, we see each other obviously on every race we do and 2022 we we raced a lot so we saw each other yeah. a lot <laughs> yeah. but 2023 it was not as many races but we still hang hang out and uh, around the races and we did training together uh, and yeah at least one one longer camp together for like a week or two okay and the training camps um something <clears throat> Is, is starting to become more popular i guess is, is that just the two of you doing your own training camp or is it yeah yeah, yeah. for this um the last two years we have been in stockholm um just during summertime before Ötele and gothenburg so end of july and august and then we have just been together uh, spending time together and, and training okay cool so it is possible to have a race a good quite a good race partner uh from different mm. parts of the world and um and, and obviously keep up your personal training i guess um yeah <laughs> next question from john um what what races can we see you at in 2024 that's a good question and um, to be completely honest we haven't really decided the schedule yet i know we i mean we have sent the application to the world champs um because you had to before a specific date. I don't remember exactly if that date mm -hmm. has passed yet, but we did send the application, and, and I hope as, for, as world champs, we are allowed to start again. Yeah, I think you've <laughs> we'll got see. a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, we have sent the application for the world champs, uh, and then I really fancied uh, and enjoyed Jota XP that was ho yes. held in France last year. And it's not a proper swim run race. It's more like a combination of aquathlon slash swim run slash triathlon with, without a bike. Yeah. Uh, and where you race solo. So that was the answer of if I've done any solo races. I really enjoyed that experience. Uh, so maybe that's on the schedule again. But to be honest, n nothing is like really, really decided. I okay. saw launched a new race in Whistler 
just the other day now in mm -hmm. Canada. That's a cool location. <laughs> so that yeah. could be something to try. Uh, and yeah. So could, what about coming over to the UK? Yeah, I mean, I, I really, uh, that would be fun. I've never done a race in UK except the Isles of Scilly when there was a um, Earth Alert race. But now I've heard there's a guy taking on that event yes. and we'll do a swim run at Isles of Scilly again, which is great. And I know, obviously, uh, you, Mike, host a lot of good races around Liverpool and, and uh, in the area. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so it would be it would be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Well, there's a lot. It's it's look it's looking like a good year in in the UK for swim run racing. Uh, quite a few new uh, or or slightly coming back or yeah. So mm. looking forward to a good year. Um, yeah, I mean it feels like the the community is growing. I mean, uh, when I'm not racing swim run, uh, I'm I'm working at Race ID. Uh, it's a Swedish tech company. We we host like an event management platform. Uh, it, this is not supposed to be a race ID uh, <laughs> commercial now, but in that in my work, I'm I get uh, I get to talk a lot of organizers, and I've been in contact with with a bunch of uh, swimrun organizers from from UK uh, this winter. So it feels like it's it's growing, it's popping up new races, uh, and uh, I can see on the platform that registration is coming coming in well. So it feels like it's a really good trend and a positive momentum, and I like that you're having having this this community together where you as a, as organizers work together and like help each other yeah. uh, rather than competing because i mean i think even if we have a pretty small community in in swim run i think the community is big enough to to work together rather than to compete so yeah yeah uh, feels like uk and france is two countries that are doing a good job at the moment in in yeah. growing the sport well, yeah I've, I've got so many questions in my head from what we've just said just mm. <laughs> just to rewind mm. a bit first time um i met max face to face was in uso 2022 but um i talked to him previously with regard to race id the uh, event registration platform but yeah it was it just reminded me when we first met at registration in 2022 we were dressed for winter mountaineering um it was it was a super cold uh edition of the race but um yeah i just had a flashback so yeah, mm. going going back to Yotta in France, the French guys seem to have really um, just taken on swim run like massively, mm. um, and not just not just the swim run racing, but that whole Yotta concept, which is as mm. you said, was it felt. I've only read a little bit about it, but it looked like it was kind of a free form. You can do what you like. You, you, just, you don't. A lot of people don't wear paddle. It's it, just explain yeah, the format. I, yeah, exactly. The format is <clears throat> you're racing solo first of all, right? Uh, and they, they and I think also just to, to begin, I think having swim run as a part of the French triathlon federation, I think helps a lot for the for the growth of sport in France at the moment because triathlon clubs uh, around in, in in France they 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 have a swim run part is part of their their daily like work that you do in the club so i think they host a lot of events and, and that helps the sport growing so yotta has come out of that so you race solo and the race format is that you you do five laps where each lap is uh, 1k swimming and 8k of running so you start with 1k swimming and then you do a transition and you run 8k and then you cross the finish line for that lap so so everyone do one lap and then you start together on lap number two, uh, like you, you start every every hour. So every okay. full hour you start a new lap. So <laughs> so everyone is doing the same start time, um, and you're allowed to use uh, whatever gear you, you want to have in the water. Uh, and they have invited triathletes, swim runners, aquathlon uh, athletes. Uh, uh, so some triathlon um, triathletes were swimming just. Uh, with with swim skin and nothing else i was swimming with obviously paddle and pool boys uh, but it, it's up to you uh, and then you're doing in the transition you're doing more of a triathlon transition so i wasn't swimming with shoes i was taking on like to choose uh, when i got up from the water and i think everyone did i think no one swam with shoes so it, it's more like a proper triathlon transition and not like a swim run transition so you, yeah. you don't have to carry and then I took off the paddles, the pool boys, the, the goggles and the hat. And I, I, I 
left that in the transition area and then I started to run. So I was running more like in a triathlon setup okay. or people were doing. Uh, and then we did our five laps uh, and, and the total time uh, for those five laps uh, is uh, your results, basically. Ah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and they they you start every hour, but every every lap, they make it harder to pass. So you have to go faster and faster to not be taken off the course. So I think for the fourth lap, you have to f- cross the finish line sub 45 minutes. Otherwise, you are not allowed to start the next lap. Oh. Then you have to do that. Uh, one case women, eight k run sub forty five minutes. Uh, okay. Otherwise, you're not allowed. Ooh. Yeah, that sounds. I'm not sure I'd make the fifth lap on that one. <laughs> oh, it was a tough race. So it was. A, I mean, it was five k in swimming total, then a forty k of running, and yeah. and it took. Yeah, it took five hours, but obviously some yeah. some resting in between there. But the only you, you basically only had time to take some energy, uh, get your gears ready again, put your pilot and pool boy on. and Very fun concept. Yeah. And I think the competition was super cool as well. There was triathletes from, from France and, and around Europe. And, and the guy who won that race uh, later that year, he won the European Championship in, in long-distance triathlon. So mm. uh, he, it was a good good competition. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was a good swim runners there. I think William... Uh, Evan was the swim runner who did best. He was third. Hugo was fourth, I think. Or, yeah. And then we were a bunch of other behind there. But they 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 did the best. Uh, they are the two best swimmers and right. running flat because that's not. I mean, my strength isn't running flat asphalt as we did on that race. Uh, but it was a uh, great fun. I really enjoyed it. That sounds brilliant. Uh, it sounds like really good training as well for swim run because mm. you've got that high intensity. Mm. You know, it's 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 proper. Uh, yeah, that would be a great mm. uh, training um, increase your performance potentially. Uh, mm. It sounds a little bit like swim run Liverpool, but not yeah. quite as good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I think the concept. I, I know you you have that concept coming. We have another one in Sweden, which is called AX Swim Run, which is kind of similar yeah. but you know you, you're trying to tighten things up you make a smaller event area you make people do laps you you make quality you make maybe you do heats which i know you will do will do in in liverpool and i think i i enjoy that that concept and i think that will be a growing concept of the sport because it's it's easy to 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 get to it's easy you have a little bit of a smaller area more, more spectator friendly and, and intense uh yeah. and, and easy accessible for everyone basically so yeah i yeah, uh, really like that concept i hope a lot of people will will try it out in liverpool yeah yeah looking forward to it and that's the 18th mm. of may and a big shout out also to as keen as mustard who are doing the survivor which is down in um down south uh in end of september i think so we've got a start of season and an end of season in terms of swim run anyway um so yeah that's all over in the uk uh okay mm. last question max um mm. this one from malcolm um so with o- otolo going over to america recently do you see a uh, america v europe rider cup swim run style mm, that would be fun yeah <laughs> that would be i never i uh, didn't thought about that idea but yeah that would be fun of course Putting together like a team, uh, yeah, like a Collins Cup, uh, like they have in triathlon, maybe. Ah, uh, I do heard some of that. things. Okay. Yeah. Then they have the team, Team Europe and Team America. I think racing against each other. Uh, but yeah, a Ryder Cup uh, thing for swim run uh, that would be super fun. I, I hope. I uh, to be honest, I'm I'm not super familiar with the American community. I, obviously, I I've, I've been there once for racing. Unfortunately, that race was was cancelled when we were there. But then we hang out a lot with the with the guys there, and uh, so I know they they have a a really committed core community, and I know people are coming up and trying swim run over there as well. But uh, yeah, obviously it's a big a, a lot of people <laughs> living in in the US and, and Canada. Uh, I mean, if we compare to Europe, it's probably the same. So potentially there will be. Uh, good swim runners and and a lot of swim runners coming from over there so hopefully Otelo can 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 help the swim yeah. run community grow and and yeah maybe in the future we can see a swim run rider cup yeah. i don't know where that will be taking place then maybe 
Mm, maybe switching every year, one year yeah. in in America and one year in in, in Europe. Yeah. Yeah, let's start that. That's okay. Uh, let's let's get something going. Uh, my mm. last question. Um, mm? I've had this question on my mind for a while. Uh, with so you and Hugo, obviously, yeah, a good level, and um, there's this Adriel Young. There's loads uh, loads of female athletes, mixed category, male. Mm. It's um, in the UK. It feels like the the top athletes in terms of speed, like the, I don't know, the top triathletes or the fastest people aren't necessarily doing swim run at all. Um, mm. how, do you think there's something putting people off? Um, the likes of, obviously, the pro triathletes, are, you know, mm. focus on their career in triathlon. But I don't know. It feels like there's there hasn't there isn't that competition at the the, the, the pointy end in swim run. Um, mm. how, do you, how can I don't know? Can you see that? developing soon yeah but uh, but i understand i understand the question and i think that's a that's a that's a hard one and if we just look at the sport at the moment i think uh, looking where people are coming from and, and how they perform i mean, I mean Fr france is growing the fastest at the moment i would say and i think also if you just look at the top athletes coming coming to the sport at the moment uh, it, it is french athletes uh, and they're coming from triathlon they're coming from swimming uh, and and then obviously we have some other athletes coming from other countries uh, if we just look at uh, people that are a little are, are um, a little bit younger for example amanda nilsson she's what is she 26 or something years old so she's quite young compared yeah. to, to other people in the sport uh, she's from Sweden, uh, but but then the other the other guys it feels like they're coming from France, and I, I just think they have done a really really good move w with putting uh, swim run in the triathlon federation and make it part of uh, of the federated sport, and 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 uh, th then you get young people to try it, uh, and people can have it as a um, for example William uh, Evan who who has done uh, some really good performances in swim run. He is doing both swim run and triathlon, and he is a professional triathlete, but but doing swim run as well. Okay. So I think, but but that's just a, uh, I I think they have done a good job with with getting like young people into the sport and 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 it, like fast people, um, because in Sweden, as you have in UK, normally there are people maybe that are ending their triathlon career that is trying out swim run and stuff like that but uh, i think it, it's it's my it's changing a little bit i, I talked with a uh, a friend yesterday a triathlete friend he, he's taking a break from triathlon this year and he said uh, yeah probably i will do some some swim run he mentioned the ex swimmer for example and he's a really talented young uh triathlete that has been racing yeah almost professionally uh, a couple of last year so um I think it's it's growing, but yeah, it's obviously we want to go make it grow faster, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. yeah, it would be fun if it, if if more if top teams were coming from 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 a lot of countries, UK for example, because it feels like UK is growing uh, a lot in terms of races and, and at least at the moment. So I think it's just a question of time. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's. It's a slow process, and yeah, you're right. France, <laughs> yeah. is, France is certainly doing something right. Um, mm. So, yeah, let's see Definitely. how it all unfolds. So, Max, mm -hmm. thank you very much for taking the time to talk to the Swim Run Show. Of uh, course, thank you so much for having me. And um, hope, well, hopefully, talk again um, in the future. Have a good season, whatever races you do. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, and great that you're putting the show and I, I hope it will be a project that will live for, for a long time forward so hopefully I can be back great yeah. mm -hmm. thank you Max thank you bye thanks for listening guys it was a pleasure doing that first podcast and it was great to get off the ground. Um, yeah, big shout out to Max Anderson. I could talk swim run all day with Max, but there are limits to everybody's time. So yeah, also a big shout out to Andy 
Alex and Malcolm. Our first question is on the Swim Run show. Uh, Simon also sent a message, but uh, we didn't get it in time. So I'll just answer his question now. It was to do with what kind of bag do you take to your swim run races? I've been taking the Salomon 45 litre duffel bag uh, since 2016 and it's worked great for me. It's got separate waterproof parts where you can put your wet gear, wet trainers in and there's enough room for all boys and all the other stuff. So yeah, that works for me. Check it out. Google it. Salomon duffel bag. Uh, last but not least thank you for listening if you've liked it or you think you might you didn't like it but you might like future episodes uh, review it like it share it all those things that people do to to help grow um, small projects Uh, yeah so hopefully you'll tune into episode two which we will be recording actually very soon thanks again bye